I'm Anissa Sakile, and you're watching the East Daily Download. This is the East Daily Download. This is the East Daily Download. This is the East Daily Download. That's right. This is the East Daily Download. So let's get started. <laughs> oh, hello, and welcome to the East Daily Download. My name is Mark. I'll be your tour guide. I'm joined by my co-tour guide today. Anissa. Hey, guys. You know Anissa. Anissa's been, she's an original. You're an, yeah, you are. Yeah, there's oh, one. Oh, gee. <laughs> you and I are the only two originals left. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, Anissa's joining me here today up back in Studio E for the first time really in a while because of, you know, we were dislocated uh, elsewhere. But um, Anissa has uh, something she needs to tell everybody. Yes, so I am moving on to a new venture in my career. I'm going to be going to Jackson, Mississippi to host and produce there, and I'm very excited, but just really appreciate all of the time that I've spent here and people I've gotten to work with. What, what's the name of the show there? It's called, the lifestyle content is Mississippi Weekend, but I'm the special projects producer, so okay. it's gonna be like any sponsor content. And um, so w you start that soon. Very soon. <laughs> Very soon. And, but it's on a weekend, so it's not a daily thing, right? So no, that's a it's not a daily thing. So that's a little bit of a, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to get each, each one of these shows done. So you have a little bit more time. Do you have a staff you're going to be working with, or is it just you for everything? So it's going to be out of the marketing department like it is yeah. here, but I'm going to be the primary person that's like shooting, editing some yeah. stuff, and like figuring out stories. But then outside of that, a lot of the content is going to be sold by the sales department, and then those are the things that will already be set up for me. Okay. But I'm excited to see, you know, the routine, the day-to-day, -day, really get into it. Well, okay. Well, well, you know what? Well, let's address. Uh, we'll go to some stories and come back and address some of your favorite, like Fashion Fridays you've done, some of your favorite uh, EDD originals. You know what you're going to miss about Eastern North Carolina. We'll cover all that in this episode and look at the special artwork that Ashley made here. Good luck, Anissa, and thanks for the memories. And she got all these different pictures uh, from different uh, things that you did, like the wood ducks. That was a classic. Halloween. Um, oh, and that, the middle one is um, uh, from the uh, uh, fashion is... Uh, art, art on art, display or fashion on display at the Greenville Art Museum. Yeah, I remember that. was that. a lot of fun. That was pre-COVID. Yeah. Yeah, Well, most of those, this, yeah. Basically everything was pre-COVID, and then we had to get creative with what we were going to do next. So. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Why don't we check out this story? We'll be back here, uh, and we'll continue the conversation with Anissa after these stories and then a commercial break, and then we'll be back. See you soon. I'm Anissa Sakile and this is Fashion Friday from Home. Something that's really been helping me break out of my at-home routine is making sure I still take the time to get outdoors. We've seen a lot of celebrities doing the same thing from Drake, Sierra, even Kylie Jenner. They are booking nature for their latest photo shoot. And I know a lot of you have heard about Black is King. You've either heard about it or you've seen it. Beyonce's Disney film. So did you know that one of those scenes in the film was actually shot in Beyonce's backyard? But why leave all of the fun to the celebrities? I've seen people at home get really creative with photo shoots out in nature, from flowers in their hair to butterflies and different elements that really kind of embody being outdoors. So I decided to get out, enjoy nature, and take a few photos of my own. I wanted to keep my makeup relatively neutral. One, because you're outside, I wanted to kind of go with that theme of being natural and wearing minimal makeup. But two, it's so hot. This North Carolina sun really can just melt you away. So I thought it's better than I have on too much makeup when doing that. But I did want to have a pop of color, and that's why I went with the blue eyeliner. I love getting out and exploring new places in North Carolina, and this photo shoot gave me the perfect reason. If you guys have been getting creative at home and taking photos outside and enjoying nature, send them to us. We love to see and put them on the show.
Hey, we are back here on a very special edition of the East Daily Download. This is like the after school special edition of the East Daily Download uh, for you children of the 80s and 70s and maybe early 90s, you'll get that. You're too young to understand that <laughs> reference. Uh, we're talking about Anissa specifically on the show because Anissa, as you mentioned, is departing to go to another station, kind of down and over, southwest of here. Um, so let's talk about Fashion Friday. That was kind of the thing when you came in, you would pitched a couple of different ideas about something you could do, and Fashion Friday is kind of where we landed. So what do you hope that all the viewers took away from those episodes, and what did you take away from them? So I remember in the beginning when we were talking about Fashion Friday, I think the main thing that I was interested in was getting out in the community, trying to interview different businesses and figure out how to kind of tell a story in that yeah. type of way. So. I wanted to do events, I wanted to do jewelry shops. I just really was excited about any and every opportunity to yeah. be able to you know, showcase different skills that I had and then also these businesses to push that local element. Uh, so I hope that everyone at home was able to learn about a lot of different uh, events, a lot of businesses yeah. that maybe people didn't know about. Like Art and Soul was really cool to go there and kind of yeah. talk about you know, gym shoes and why that's really important in different cultures to molecular jewelry and just learning about her being from Costa Rica and being able to have that inspiration but grow her business here and just like have that uh, touch of home through jewelry and her work. So it was really nice. I mean, it's, it's hard to sometimes say, do you have a favorite, but do you have a couple that popped to mind of like, that m maybe, I mean, I know they all mean something to you. They're all your children, but do you, is there one or two that you look and go, oh, that one just, it worked really well. I was really happy with it. Do you have any of those? Yes, I have to say, I know I just talked about it, but Ileana uh, from Molecular Jewelry, yeah. that was definitely my favorite shoot. Bryce and I went out for that, and we did multiple segments yeah. because her story really, we felt like it, it deserved more than just like one Fashion yeah. Friday, so we were able to get at least four different parts, kind of starting out with her inspiration from Costa Rica, and then showing how she does custom pieces here. Uh, a really important part for her was uh, maintaining jewelry that might be really important in people's families and giving it a new touch. Huh. So I thought that was really cool yeah. to showcase and just going there and then also the pink. You know, her building was pink. It really attracted <laughs> me to it. It's like my favorite color. So it was perfect. The East Daily Download is sponsored this week by the following. Hi, I'm Bob Braxton. I'm the athletic supervisor here at Surf City Parks and Rec wanted to talk to you today a little bit about our athletics programs that we offer the community. Right now we're on our athletic facility fields. We offer soccer from ages 3 to 15 in the youth program plus an adult program uh, for 16 and up. We also offer softball for adults. This is also where we hold our flag football for youth. Uh, we offer a t-ball and a coach pitch program. We also offer basketball programs for youth and adult. We also have a futsal program, which is our indoor soccer program. We also offer pickleball uh, for all age groups, although it is considered more of an older age group game. Uh, we do enjoy having young kids out here playing as well. We offer a tennis uh, clinic program. We offer basketball clinics. Uh, we also offer volleyball clinics. Uh, we do have a volleyball program that runs from age nine through adult in our community center gymnasium. But we're offering quite a bit of our athletic programs for people to enjoy the area and enjoy getting out and getting some exercise and having fun. Our programs are recreational, so we base them on learning and instruction instead of wins and losses. And I think a lot of that has to do with the kids wanting to learn more instead of being pressured early and young. Uh, we also offer an athletic program or athletic sponsorship program for local businesses in the area to help with the cost of running our programs. Uh, most of these uh, businesses have generously given to us so that we can afford nice jerseys, nice uniforms for the kids uh, and for the adult programs. Uh, they get their names on the jerseys and you know, a little bit of advertising for the big, uh, all the people that we have out here. You can always find us here at the Community Center, which is located at 201 Community Center Drive in Surf City, North Carolina. For our programs, you can uh, always go to our website at surfcitync.gov and look under the Athletics tab under Parks and Rec and see all of our programs listed that are either being registered for or coming up. Or you can email us at athletics at surfcitync.gov.
The East Daily Download is sponsored this week by the following. Hey, we're back here on the East Daily Download. Hope your day is going great so far. Ours is a little bittersweet here because Anissa has announced to everybody that she's leaving. So we're happy for her, sad for us in the show. And I'm sure everybody out there who's watched the East Daily Download from the beginning shares the sentiment. So with that, we talked a little bit about Fashion Friday. Let's talk about the original stories, East Daily Download originals. Um, uh, talk about the pandemic that played a huge huge role because so much of that was really done during that time right. and how that affected how you were able to try to tell a story and the challenges that, that you I mean everybody faced but you faced doing that but how maybe it spurred the different kind of creativity to figure things out yeah that all of that is a really good point uh, what was it was a transition because really right as you know, the pandemic happened and then we started working from home, yeah. that's when I was able to do more reporting for the show outside of the Fashion Friday. So coming up with different stories and figuring out how am I gonna do that from home, really Zoom was <laughs> the like savior with that. So I remember one of the first uh, stories that I did from home was on birding or bird watching yeah. and being able to Zoom a representative from the Wildlife North Carolina Committee and talk with him about tips for being stuck at home, wanting to try new hobbies, getting outside. Uh, he was just saying one of the easiest things to do is just step outside on your patio or just take a walk and really look up and listen and try to identify uh, different birds. So that was really exciting for me. I picked up a pair of binoculars and it, it was something that was kind of close to my heart too because with my uh, late grandfather, he really loved like binoculars and like kind of looking outside of a you know yeah. home and, and observing and so I remember seeing that in my grandparents home when I was growing up. So it gave you an emotional connection. It did and I had never thought to get a pair of binoculars and things like that so, so now it was you're, really cool. Now are you bird watching daily? A little bit more. <laughs> I might, might not use the binoculars as much but I see them every day they're hanging up on my wall so it was really a cool story. I mean you did a ton of stories I mean we did you did the one about um, the, like the Instacart and the shopping um, there were just so many different things. There was, um, I can't think of the name of the place that delivered the food, the, the, the restaurant that had the van out in the parking lot that people would come and oh, get. Oh yeah, Farmer in the Dale. Yeah, Farmer that in was the really Dale. cool. Yeah, so I mean, there was a lot of different things, but what did you find most rewarding about doing that? Uh, I think just having to get creative in ways that you could not predict. Because when I moved here, of course I wasn't expecting to like be working from home <laughs> for a year. Especially, you know, when yeah. you don't know people, so just finding ways to get out, I think it was a real opportunity for me to still, you know, be safe with it, wearing masks and keeping that distance, yeah. but I was still able to get out. It's a perfect job uh, to be able oh, to meet yeah. new people still and just try to communicate. And you also, um, the pizza one that you did about the pizza kits. Yes, and, and so, Mellow Mushroom, Take Home Pizza Kits. Oh, and then uh, Paint a Peacock. Yeah. The, a, lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that. everyone, a lot of businesses during that time got creative with ways to stay, you know, engaged with their customers. Yeah. And so take home kits from restaurants to places like the Paint a Peacock were just like really popular. And so it was cool to be able to incorporate that in the show and just support those businesses, get the word out. And now, I mean, all of those places are doing well now. Do, so. do you have any, again, kind of going back to the question last go around, do you have a favorite one? I mean, not necessarily the pandemic, but any of the originals that you've done? Yes, I have to say uh, my favorite East Daily Download original happened very recently on Aviation Day. Okay. And so being able to uh, call Dylan Aviation, plan a, a flight, go out, go up, uh, in Greenville, look down at this stadium and different areas of town that I wasn't, well, that I hadn't even seen really, because yeah. some parts of ECU, I am not here for school, so I have not explored. Yeah. But uh, I saw a fountain and then later actually went to a Wind Symphony concert and I was like, oh, this is a fountain and I'm seeing up close and I saw <laughs> I it from the aerial view. Air, aerially. Yes, so it was really cool. And then the pilot there, he let me actually fly the plane for about 
30 seconds. <laughs> and it was the most exhilarating and 30 then you, seconds. Like, quickly said, give that back. It was, I told him to give it back. <laughs> I said, Giselle Please, can, was in can the you back. Take this? <laughs> yes. Giselle from marketing was in the back, and Claire from the news was in the back. And I think that they were a little more worried than I was <laughs> uh, having to have their lives. Literally in my hands, but we all made it through, and that was my favorite story for sure. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll be back here in a little bit and wrap things up on the East Daily Download. Go and you're watching. You're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you are watching. You're watching. And you're watching the East Daily Download. The Greenville Art Museum is showcasing fashion as a form of art. It is a bakery, there's wine, there's lunch, there's great iced coffee. One of the best things could be to order to go beers from a brewery like Pitch Street. From beautiful downtown Washington, here at the historic waterfront, all these boats out in the water right now. When you see a plane flying across the sky, it seems like something so far off in the distance, but you can get experience flying a plane right here in Greenville at Dillon's Aviation. So I'm joined by Ian Sherrington. Thank you so much for being here today with Dillon Aviation. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah. So if you could talk to me about what you do here and kind of how long you've been into flying planes. So I'm the Assistant Chief Instructor at Dillon's Aviation. We teach people how to fly and get them into their initial pilot certificate, and we can take you all the way to the point that you're eligible to work for an airline. Uh, what I do here is just predominantly the training and the supervision, stage checks, and things along those lines, and I've been flying for about uh, three years now. Absolutely love it. That's so beautiful. So in terms of the schooling, you know, the classwork that you have to do to get out here, what is the process like to start getting that certification? So there's a combination of ground training, learning all the regulations and you know, the rules and weather in terms of flying, and then the actual flight portion where we teach you all different types of maneuvers and landings and takeoffs so that you'll inevitably be able to take a check ride and get your certificate. And so if someone at home is interested in trying to get involved with this, what is the process like to start? So it's as easy as just calling us. You can walk in and uh, we can get you started right away. There's a process of getting a medical to make sure you're fit enough to fly. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's, a, it's just a lot of fun and it doesn't take very long. The national average is uh, you can get a pilot certificate in early as 35 hours to 40 hours of flying at a facility like this. And uh, it's, it's a blast. Wow, so not too hard to get involved and take that step to make flying a reality right here in Greenville. Could you talk to me a little bit about Dillon Aviation and how long that this has been around? This place has been around here longer than me, longer than I've been alive. <laughs> they have uh, been a maintenance facility and a flight training facility for decades. They have a tremendous amount of experience doing this. And this is the kind of place that you want to learn how to fly and become a very good pilot. And so for you personally, that's really amazing that you were able to connect, you know, here and, you know, live this lifestyle. But what kind of got you started with the passion of wanting to learn to fly? So I grew up with a grandfather who was a fighter pilot in World War II. He flew Spitfires and I always just grew up idolizing what he had achieved in life. And in the back of my mind, I always wanted to become a pilot. I had a, a career for 15 years before this and then transitioned into becoming a pilot. So regardless of if you're a teenager and you know you want to start flying right now, or if you're someone that's been doing something for a long period of time and just looking for a change, it's entirely possible and it's fantastic. Now I get to fly these planes and fly jets and I absolutely love it. I know this is a family owned business and so tell me what <laughs> uh, Dylan's wife was saying earlier about aviation. Every day is aviation day here. It's it's a beautiful, I mean, we can always find sunshine somewhere. So it's a, it's a, always great to be a pilot. And all of these planes, it's not the average thing that, that I see in the day to day. So this is an amazing experience to be here. Thank you so much, Ian. No worries, thank you for coming. Well, we just touched ground after an amazing flight. Ian, you know, you're an experienced pilot, but how was it going out there with me for the first time letting me take control? You did a fantastic job. You're ready to start. Thank you. So we're going to sign me up for those classes. But for you guys at home on your next flight, whether you prefer the aisle or maybe a window seat, I think it might be time to consider yourself in the cockpit. I'm Anissa Sakile with the East Daily Dow. What do you think you're going to miss um, most both from the job perspective and just living in Eastern North Carolina? Hmm. So on the job, I have to say I'll miss 
uh, the people. <laughs> a real uh, team, you know, element, um, being able to go out on shoots yeah. with, you know, Bryce and Giselle, and yeah. then, well, more recently Giselle, but in the beginning, you know, me, you, Lauren, Bryce, yeah. uh, John, occasionally, you know, Naomi. So, you know, overall, I would just thank everybody for watching. I know that we've done a lot of crazy, fun stuff. I thank you guys for hanging in there with us and seeing how we've grown to evolve and how we will continue to evolve because this is just a new beginning for us now. That's for you, Aww. for the new office. I have wall. always wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the walls here. I would walk by and I'm like, oh, I can't and wait to one say day. More than once, can I, when that comes down, can I have that? So your and timing is, is good because idea. it just came down. So thank uh, you. you waited just the right time to leave. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for all your time and your talents and really spending a lot of time to try to make it the best show that it can be. And we wish you nothing but happiness and luck in very muggy, muggy Jackson, Mississippi. Yes, I will be able to handle the humidity. I got a taste of it here. <laughs> I know it's about to be cranked up. So <laughs> I'm excited for the new journey, but really cherish this. The East Daily Download is sponsored this week by the following. Closed captioning for the East's daily download is sponsored by Hearing Life.